All right, well, here we are. Missions 421 to 430 have just released, and we're going to play them. Every single one, even the missions that I might deem as boring or uninteresting. And I'm going to try to be a bit more optimistic about it this time. Maybe this time the missions are actually good. Let's start. 421 versus the Borderland Flame Feeders versus the Flame Feeders Mercenary at 2 minutes, Flame Feeder Princess. Okay, not the not something I wanted to see right off the bat, but again, we're being optimistic here. Maybe this is the one time we'll have to deal with the princess and a mercenary. Even the mercenaries are starting to become pretty overused here, but optimism, remain optimistic. Do not get tilted right off the bat. Honestly, given that we're considering we're given a pathetic number of upgrades here, I'm thinking I could just undead sword spam this to death. Like, it's probably one of the most powerful sword spam strats out there, right alongside ice sword wrath spam. But it just doesn't accomplish what undead sword spam can do. Having a ton of sword wrath run in, do a ton of damage, and then all die at the same time and turn into a horde of deads is really good. And there's no other unit type that can pull it off better than the sword wrath. For a unit that's super cheap, that trains really fast, gets a lot of work done, and has a lot of value overall. So I'm not going to wait. I think I could just go in here. Waiting is for people that have patience, and that's what I'm not. There you go. It's a kill already. We get a dead there. I was not trying to leap attack. I, I really don't understand what the issue is with constantly leaping on accident but i can't seem to stop doing it and look how many dead look how many deads be farmed by choosing to attack early like this is too good and we're going to get another dead here and then we'll fall back so now the castle i just get to have fun with killing all those deads while we make a clean getaway and continue to get more undead swords to repeat the same thing as before but with more success involved they're going to bring out more Lava Swords, and I'm just going to say screw you and attack again, since the AI has no way of stopping this. And they're going to turn into Cowards and Garrison again, so we'll fall back again. Come on, man. If you don't want... If you, if you don't... Like, they really need to be given some better stuff here in order to handle my early game pressure. They have no answer to it, except, oh, let's turn into Cowards and run away every time every time they do it and it really does get old so i'm not gonna wait because i'm not in the mood to wait it's the flame feeders mercenary oh we, hold on we can we can we can literally kill them thanks to this glitch yeah we can kill them thanks for free thanks to this glitch right here this glitch where he literally does not attack units that are set to all attack and stick for legacy will glitch out and this is a pathetic reinforcement wave this is a joke of a reinforcement wave. The only the only reason why it's even going to succeed is because of their overrated princess here. But this is a pathetic reinforcement wave. But yeah, the uh, the freaking mercen. Wait, why am I even targeting the princess when the statue is weak? And the princess is glitched out now because she's pushed up against the castle gates. So this is one of the easiest missions ever played. So, yeah, a lot of issues there. The mercenary Sword Wrath got bullied because he was set to all attack. And since the enemy was garrisoned, it screwed up his AI and made him into an idiot. And then the princess just forced up against the castle gates. And archers that are forced up against the castle gates glitch out and won't fire. So, yeah, that, that, that went as I expected. So, let's hope 422 is better. Gold Rush versus the Vampiric Soul Steel is both up with 2,000 gold. This one seems like a really bland one, but I'm going to keep to my word and not skip it. But honestly, this is feeling like yet another undead sword spam mission. Oh, and you give me a lot of gold too. That's what you don't do here when I have a bunch of swords I can use. So yeah, they pretty much lost this game. There's simply no beating these... 11 swords that I'm training unless they start with like a giant or something But I doubt they're gonna do that because the AI really they don't know their unit composition that well here 
Although what's unfortunate is it's going to take a lot of effort to kill these miners because we're talking double the health. Further, yet yeah, see how it's right. They start with the giant. Yeah, that's that's. I can distract this thing all day. Yep, there you go. This win as expected. I mean, come on, you gave me, you gave me access to two thousand gold, and they did not start with units that were capable of killing swords quickly. And this reinforcement wave is also still pretty freaking mid. Like, I really don't view the giant as threatening at all here. A lot of the sword rats are going to get distracted running after the miners. So I'm going to say screw it and just go for the statue here because I see no reason for this to get prolonged. Like, I just don't. And that's going to be another pretty easy mission. Like, and it's just been undead sword spam. 423 versus the Voltaics, United, and Vampiric tribes. Generals in the reinforcing units. One more general pull difficulty. So it's a 1v3 essentially, although it's not even. I, I'm pretty sure I can beat it with undead sword spam yet again. Seven upgrade points left. It's not really worth upgrading anything else other than this. We'll do this and this. I can probably just undead sword spam this entire thing here. I'm not gonna lie, so far it so far it's been pretty disappointing. Like 421 was super easy to cheese. 422 was insanely easy to beat because you give me 2,000 gold and I can spam swords on it. Enemy starts with a giant. By that time I have a whole bunch of swords. Easy to distract the giant. I mean I could go on here. And uh, since this I don't have to worry about this spear to that much. Might be able to just bait his attacks, and he won't be able to charge as quickly here. Yep, yeah, that's a miss. Land that leap attack. Oh, we even, wow, we even dodged the head stun attack. That normally does not happen like that. That's fine. I mean, this Voltaic Spiritan is already pretty low, and I can just bully the vamp swords. Leap attack follow up for a free 216 damage. We kill the Sword Wrath. We're about to kill the Spiritan. We hit a Sword Wrath there. This is going to kill the spear team. We get a spear team dead there. We're going to get another dead right here because that sword rat turned around. We're going to get another dead. Like, come on, man. This is just utter domination right now. Yeah, sure. You put me up against three factions and I'm bullying the crap out of them. They just now killed that undead sword. But guess what? I can just go right back, select another one, rinse and repeat the same process. And they still have not killed these deads yet. That's a free dead right there. 216 damage. The sword wrath is still distracted, attacking the deads, enabling me to get another kill and another vamp sword wrath, giving me yet another dead. I really think we can just solo this with one freaking undead sword, at least before the reinforcements show up. We dodged that before we die, and now we just continue to pick at them. That's dead. That's dead. That's two more deads. Leap attack the miner, tanks the hell out of it, since Voltaic gives extra HP like Vamp does. But it doesn't matter, like, I can do this all day. And I have a big Sword Wrath army building up in the base that's gonna tear through the generals like they're made of paper. Oh, you, you, you don't want to target me? Well, that's an easy kill. Give me another dead. 216 damage, which barely puts the miner at half health. Voltaic and Vamp Miners on Insane are ridiculously tanky. But obviously it's for the best, because otherwise it would be way too easy to cheese. Though, not to say that this wasn't easy to cheese in itself. Like, I've soloed this. Okay, there you go. There's reinforcements. We have... A savage prince and a oh a, a princess a mercenary and a prince and that's it this re look at this look at this we are going to i don't even need to control anything here we are going to annihilate this it does not matter princess prince mercenary doesn't matter look at my freaking sword wrath dominate like this was yet another super easy to cheese mission because they don't have an answer to early game. Now, as you can see, a ton of my freaking swords are dead now because that, that Voltaic Mercenary has been getting a lot of discharge power going on. 
But now he has to kill all those deads, and I'm gonna—I'm just gonna focus on the mercenary and get him out. There you go. Now they can't do anything. Never mind. They got the princess still. But they are still struggling to ki kill these deads, and I'm gonna try and sit here and see how much damage I can sneak in. Look at the prince, man. The deads have shredded him. Oh, look at this. The princess is gone, too. I didn't I didn't realize that I had a lot of crawling dead still. There you go. Princess is dead. Yet another mission that is falling victim to undead sword spam. Three missions in a row have been defeated with undead sword spam. Like, I said I was being optimistic, or, uh, optimistic earlier, but now I'm starting to lose hope again. Like, this really does not... So far, it is not good. It has been really bad. They're, they, they're continuing to build these Vamp Sword Wrath, and really, they are just stalling. They're, they're, they're stalling against the inevitable here. And there you go. That's it. Game freaking over. Three missions in a row, defeated with undead sword spam. Oh yeah, it's the second mission that uses a princess. It, it, my god. Alright, on to 424. Versus buffed magi kill. You gotta be freaking kidding me. That's it? So far, no buff match I kill and, and when it comes out you know what we can probably corner them here I just realized that yeah there you go it's a buffed match I kill oh wow a damage of 256 how freaking scary when I can bait the crap out of that easily yeah who cares if that insta kills this, like, this is so irrelevant man let's bait the blast again Oh, yeah, this match I kill screwed. Now I can I can bait this guy indefinitely. Too freaking easy. And not only that, the buff match I kill is weak. Look how weak it is in terms of HP. Yet another mission that is going to be defeated with undead sword spam. Is this is this really how this is gonna go? Like I this is a waste of time. This absolutely is a waste of time. Like, holy crap. I don't... There you go. An uh, another another slow-ass buffed Magi kill because we just can't get it. I mean, come on. Look at this. You think that buff Magi kill is going to kill all this? I essentially have Sword Wrath with three health phases. The first one has their Sword Wrath. Then when they respawn as deads. And then the second health phase of the deads. Look how much damage a... Damage from behind leap attack does. You cannot make this up. This is a joke. I, I, I don't even have to use training haste to get the rest of these swords out. These waves are super weak. Fighting classic units is super lame. Man. I, tr I really try to be optimistic here. But so far, this is just sad. This is just sad and it's a reflection of the awful state that Stick World Legacy is in. In fact, that reminds me, I completely forgot to talk about the chest update that the game recently got, because that was also worthless. So, uh, the chest got an update, in case you weren't aware, where now you have three different types of chests. Silver, gold, and crystal. Silver chest being the least valuable, gold chest having a slightly bit more value, and crystal chest having the most value. And I have to show you the shop at the end of this because you're not going to believe your eyes when I show you the prices of the shop. At least in terms of, you know, my region and where I live. It's actually ridiculous. Here we go. Some more Sword Wrath and another classic buffed Magi kill. Like, this this is so dog crap. This is so freaking meaningless. Like, oh, man. It does not matter. Again, these Magi Kill can do 5 million damage with their blast, and it amounts to nothing against Undead Sword Spam. But anyways, I was saying, 
the golden chest, which is basically the, the classic chest that we were all used to before the update, have been nerfed. I'm sure some of you guys remember, but you can you can uh, win skins. You used to be able to win skins from chests, and if it was a skin that you already own, you would get a gem refund value on that skin. So, for example, if you get Bam Sword Wrath, but turns out you already have Bam Sword Wrath unlocked, you would get a refund of 750 gems with it, which is was absolutely tremendous. It gave it gave the pre it, it gave the uh, pre updated chest a lot of value. This update completely removes that. You no longer you no longer win skins from chests in order to get decent gem refunds. Wow, look at that. That mission was a joke. A complete joke, a waste of my time. But we're gonna temporarily divert here. I'm gonna take you to the chest section. Oh, I can't show you the store because I'm I'm fast forwarded in time and I have airplane mode on. I mean, uh, my time traveling powers. Well, whatever, I'll, I'll show it to you when I travel back to the present. I have powers, people, believe it. All right, well, this takes on to mission 425 versus deads and tank deads, play as the golden units. <sighs> okay. I'm only doing this because I just have to see if 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 these golden units don't do the damage I want them to do, I am leaving this mission. Like, this is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting to do 112 damage using control of the golden spear 10, and I'm expecting to be able to do 76 body shot damage with a golden archer and 120 headshot damage. If I don't get that, I am I am not gonna get to you playing this mission. We have numerous missions where you play as the golden units and their damage is not satisfying to me. Might be satisfying to you, but it's not to me. Yep, yeah, no, we're out. We're not even gonna check the golden arch. We already know it's gonna be trash. So we are skipping 425, I broke my promise. Play as the Toxify Lights, there's Sword Breath and Spirit Gents versus, or not versus, uh, the Toxify Leader is joining your army against the Blood Blades and the Baron. All right, we might have a more interesting mission here. I get to put the Toxify Light Sword Wrath against the Blood Blade Swords. Baron spawns immediately. Same with the Toxify Light Leader. All right, Baron, I hope you're ready for the smoke. You should be. If they garrison here, I swear to God. Okay, so no garrison. Oh, they're skin affected. Well, it's time to see what a fully charged Toxify Light... Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The Blood Blades, and yet they... Come on, man! You cannot make this up! What is this pathetic cowardice? I only have the I, I only have the Toxify Light Leader and three Toxify Light Swords, and they garrison! Like, what? what is wrong with this AI? Why is it so slow? Why is it so cowardly? I will never un- I, you outnumber me. If you garrison, I will lose it. Holy crap, finally, you're not being wusses. God dang, man. It took you morons long enough to stop being cowards and fight me. Yeah, nice try. We're going to see how much this does against the Baron here. Oh my god. Dude, he. Yeah, so, um. Yeah, talks to Firelight. Toxify Light Leader paired with Voltaic is probably the most powerful archer in this game. Oh, here we go. Some more blood bit. It doesn't even matter. Wow, I can't. I can't. I don't. This, why am I. Why, why am I. I'm, man, I, I'm, I'm short circuiting right now and I don't know why. I guess it's just, I, I, again, I tried to enter this optimistic. I tried to give it a chance and it turned out to be, a, okay, at least we, at least, that's a slightly better reinforcing wave. I'm gonna fight ahead on here. I won't use the Toxic Fire Leader as an easy out. Yeah, you know, I might as well, who cares? Oh, oops, I forgot I can, well, well, he's dead. Well, that's fine, honestly. This, this is probably be finally get a damn challenge here. God dang it. 
I'm trying to use the uh, I'm trying to use the exploit where you can swipe behind you on the left side of the screen to avoid having the double tap deselect crap happen. But some slight blunders from me, and yet we still steamroll them. At, at least this wasn't another undead sword spam to win mission. But I don't know. It still wasn't. It it still wasn't that good. Might as well ignore the blood blades and just throw my spears at the statue until we kill it here. Because we can absolutely do that. Yep, I don't care how many more waves you see and you're not... Okay, never mind, they actually killed that. Alright, fine, you want to play this game, I can play this game. That damage effect is going to hurt you a little bit. There we go, there we go. Now I know how to do it. Uh, I'm just gonna go for this. Oh, I, I like how they want to be aggressive now. Honestly, that opportunity has been lost. I am spirit throwing your statue and I'm killing it here. Almost there. Well, guess what? This will do it. There we go. Got it. I will say at the very least, while this mission was better quality, the, the Stick World Legacy AI is too weak and too much of a coward for it to really mean anything significant. So, that takes us on to 427. Attack at Sunset versus the Woodlands. Uh, no, I'm skipping that. 2v2 against the Woodland Tribes and Glacial Uprising. Team up with the United Tribes. This is a copy-paste mission as well. Teaming up with the United Tribes means absolutely nothing. 100 population and generals on both sides. Why does... Why does... Why does the fact that we're getting super units not excite me? Normally, I like playing with super units. Like, it adds a lot of enjoyment for me. But even that is not... <sighs> I'm so disappointed right now. Like, I really am. Who knows? We could probably undead sword spam this to death, too. Let's see here. Here's some reinforcements. Yo, mm -hmm, same crap as always. All right, so they start with their generals immediately. Uh, I get a pummeler jump. I get a pummeler giant. Wow, I am. S that is absolutely phenomenal. I'm just so elated that I get this overrated pummeler giant. That is definitely not going to get eviscerated by the enemy super units. There's just absolutely no way. It, it would be impossible for us to lose now that we have a uh, Pummeler Giant on our side. I mean, absolutely worth the freaking effort here. I cannot wait for the exhilarating action. We're going to see here. Oh, let's see how much damage we're capable of. Uh, it's only 100 damage, even though we attack a little bit faster. You know what's funny about this? You know what also does 100 damage to these units? Griffin the Grave. Uh, which honestly goes to show how bad Griffin the Great is, considering this Pummeler Giant, which is leagues weaker than him, does the same damage as him, essentially. Oh, and look at this, the, the Pummeler the Pummeler is kind of getting crapped on by the, by the enemy Prince units here. It's almost like I'm going to get way more value using the... Uh, Hold up. Um, okay, my my damage as a prince is kind of... It's 180? Yeah, okay, it's higher. Well, it's time to kill one of the princes here. Didn't kill. All right, I'm surprised a little bit there, but... Yeah. Uh, wow, they already garrisoned. This is so much fun, by the way. I, I forgot to mention how exhilarating this was. I get a whole pummel of the giant. Honestly, I'm surprised a princess didn't show up. Or maybe a sword wrath mercenary, you know? Because it's it's the same thing every time. It's the same thing every time. And there's there seems to be just nothing. Nothing different. Nothing new here. Nothing exciting. Like that I, I feel like that just describes Stick World Legacy as a whole. Not exciting. Honestly, I, I want to break the statue now because I'm so disappointed out of my... Oh, look at that. The pummeler's dead. The pummeler's dead and it did nothing at all. All right. Well, it's time to... It, it's time for some more action here. 
I'm gonna get these undead swords. I'm gonna training haste them and I'm gonna beat this level because frankly, I am mentally tired of this and I just want it to end. Um, scrimmage against Arik. You know what? I would skip this, but I need some satisfaction in absolutely annihilating something I hate. So we're gonna go full take Spiritons here, and we're gonna we're gonna play this one. Well, here's my growing army here, and what do they have to keep up with it? Three Sword Wrath, one Spiritin, and two Archers. Pretty soon, probably gonna be three Archers. Uh, with super deathmatch training speeds, might I add, and they still just can't seem to keep up here. Like I, oh yeah, there you go. Uh, surprise garrison, shocker. And the idiots here, but they're. Are you seriously gonna? Okay, there we go. Reinforcements on top of it. I was gonna say, I thought they were gonna stay garrison until the statue got low. That really would have just made it even more infuriating. So a golden spear turned a bunch of swords, two merics, and the dumbass himself. Uh, yeah. This can probably defeat this. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Wow, and I, I, I happened to select the correct Sword Wrath to get the 216 damage leap attack on it. Okay, seriously, what is with these miners getting in the way? They keep making sword wrath, and it's, you know what? Just end this crap. I'm, t I'm tired of this. God, how do I whiff that? Whatever, get the hell out of here, bitch. I got the last hit. Last mission, 430, gauntlet level against the United Tribes means absolutely nothing to me, considering fighting the United Tribes enemy faction is so bland and boring. I almost don't even want to play this one, but it'd be stupid to not play a gauntlet mission, so we'll do it. Yeah, I kid you not, this is definitely following the same format as a similar gauntlet mission where it's three sword wrath three archers then a couple spears and then we're gonna see uh what a mercenary i knew it hold up this this is the this is a copy paste mission of the leaf gauntlet mission where the, i guarantee the next general we're gonna face is the princess then the prince and then a pummel the giant i am calling it right now Get out, idiot. Right, there you go, stupid worthless mercenary is dead. Yep, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it. This is a, this is a copy paste mission of the Leaf Gauntlet mission. I forgot I forgot the mission number. I want to say it's 410, I don't know. But this is following the exact same format of unit composition except it's the United Savage Tribes. The... Man... <laughs> I almost don't want to continue playing. Like, I'm serious. This is... This has been yet another disappointing bunch of missions. And I tried. I tried to put my negative criticisms aside and be optimistic. I tried to give it a chance. Okay, so it's the prince this time, not the princess. I had it in reverse. But we're probably going to be facing the princess next, and then a pummel. Let the let the prince come out. All right, now destroy him. Almost got him. These sword wrath are not going to make him any better. 
Except now we got pushed all the way back and it's gonna get take forever to kill those deads. But you know what? I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm not even I'm not gonna sit here and wait. He's almost dead. Again, these spear tins are not gonna save him here. There you go, he's gone. Wow, what what an exhilarating mission. Oh, and yep, there's the princess. So yep, I was right, but I had it in reverse. The format is mercenary, prince, princess, pummeler. That's all we face in these missions. Mercenary, prince, Princess Pummeler. Mercenary Prince, Princess Pummeler. Mercenary Prince, Princess Pummeler. Mercenary Prince, Princess Pummeler. And maybe the odd swift giant here and there. This is all we get. Oh, 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 yeah. And then we got the a, a grand match I kill it in two or two every now and again. Which the only one that has any significant power is the voltaic version. There's an ice grand match I kill, but it's complete garbage considering that ice match I kill does not do anything because the freeze time is in sync with the stun time. Now I will say this is a bit different because in the previous, in the Leaf Gauntlet mission, they didn't get two Palm of the Giants, but even still, it's freaking Palm of the Giants. Like, what, what more do I have to say from that? What more do I have to say from that other, yet another example of overuse? Oh, look at that, it's the Grand Magi Kill of the United Tribes. Just as useless as the Ice version. Except, well, he, that, the only reason the damage was that high was because he hit deads. Like, sure, his damage to deads is pretty big. But guess what? It does not matter because he, I've said this before and I'll say it again. You can give me a Grand Magi kill that does 5 trillion damage with a single blast. And guess what? It is still going to require 2 hits for them to kill a dead. Because no matter how much damage you do to a dead, unless it's Voltaic, you have to deal with the second health phase. So yeah, the, the Grand Magi kill of the United Tribes was worthless. You might as well say it was a buffed classic Magi kill that does slightly higher damage to deads. Just as worthless as the Ice Grand match I kill. Like, no, it, it, it's just copy pasted bland crap. Copy pasted bland crap. And we are 430 missions in to this. 430. And we've only had a couple of instances where we got good quality missions. I just, I, I don't, I don't know what, uh, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say anymore other than I'm, I'm seriously losing hope. I'm seriously losing hope in Stickboy Legacy. I lost hope in Stickboy 3 a, a very long time ago, and now Stickboy Legacy is heading in that direction as well. It got. It, it, I thought it was getting better with the turn of the mill, but then I got nerfed to crap. Uh, I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm done. Okay, so before I end the video completely, a uh, quick little bonus clip here talking about this chest update. So if we go to the gym section here and bring up the shop, as you can see, we now have three different kinds of chests: the golden chests, which have, which are basically the default chest like those are the chests that have existed before this update but now we have silver chests and we have crystal chests from what i heard from the devs at some point you'll be able to earn the other two chests through regular gameplay or something like that i don't i don't know the exact words but in order to introduce these new chests they nerfed the golden chests or the default chests or whatever so you remember early in the recording when I said you used to be able to win skins from chests and if you happen to win a skin that you already unlocked, 
you would get a gem refund for it. Vamp gives you 750, Ice gives you 125, I believe Undead Skin gives you 300 or 350, and I don't remember the rest, but other, it, it, all in all, it was still a very good system that gave chests a lot of value. Well, guess what? That is now gone. You no longer get skins from default chests. This is what you get now. This is a loot table that shows you the item that you might get and the percent chance of you getting that item with the lowest being the golden chest for 0.4% to the highest being 10 worthless gems at 62.4% and everything here in between. With the highest gem count you can possibly get being 100 gems. But that's at a 1.9% chance. So this is what you get from a golden chest now. Worthless. Pretty much worthless. At least in my terms. Might be very good for you, but compared to compared to how valuable these chests used to be before this update, I find this to be super unsatisfying, even though we got a Kai Rider there. But for the most part, you're you're getting Again, compared to how good the chest used to be, I just don't care for this. Not to mention, looking at the look at the prices here. So <laughs> this is this is the pricing for everything, at least in my area, my region. For the most part, I would consider a lot of these to not be worth the price. For example, paying two dollars and fifty cents for three hundred gems. Okay. I spent 250 for 300 gems. That's one golden spiritin, or two golden archidots, or one stone giant. And then you're flat broke again. 10 silver chests for uh, $10. Believe it or not, I actually did cough up the money to do this. And you know what? I'm doing this for you guys. I want to show you how bad this is. I'm going to cough up $10 for 10 silver chests. Again, if it weren't for you guys, I would not do this. There we go. Woohoo. 10 silver chests. Let it rain up in here. So, I just spent $10. 10 clams on 10 silver chests. Let's see what we get from it. Um, Honestly, I could care less about the spell items. We're going to count the total number of gems we get from these 10 chests that I spent $10 on. So, so far, we're at 10. This is 50, so 60. That's 70, 85. That's 80, so 85 plus 80. Uh, 80 plus 80 is 160, so I believe 165 if I'm doing my math correctly. That's 70, so 165 plus 70. That's 240, I believe. That's 250, 260, 270. Three hundred and five. Three twenty-five, three thirty. All right, so if I did my math correctly, I only got 385 gems out of these 10 silver chests. Yeah, uh, totally, it, definitely money well spent, right? It turns out the silver chests have even less value than the golden chests. So do not spend your money on the silver chests. You have now learned that from me. Then you have 10 golden chests for 25 dollars only 10 and you've seen the golden chest they've been nerfed it is worse then you can buy for eight dollars you can get 1200 gems which in stick for legacy terms is not a lot of gems at all that is way too expensive hey if that's not good enough get 20 golden chests for 50 dollars or the big boss here 10 crystal chests for $50. Or you can get your starter pack here, honestly. The starter packs, I would say, hold a, a lot more value at the very least. 
compared to the silver chests. And the silver chests were $10. I got 385 gems worth from 10 silver chests. When if I bought a starter pack or the chaos pack, you get 2,000 gems by default, not even counting the spells. 4,000 gems for $20. Eh, I don't know. It's still kind of it's still kind of up there in price. Uh, the super pack here, I would say, is actually a bit more worth it since you do get four decently useful spells uh, and five thousand gems for twenty five dollars. Actually, not a bad deal. Ten thousand gems for thirty seven dollars. It's not the worst thing ever. Or you can get the ultra pack, twenty four thousand gems and fifty golden chests for ninety five dollars. I don't think that's worth it. And then everything else doesn't matter because who the hell's watching an ad for 10 gems? Not a single person on this planet is doing it. But um, yeah, that is the chess update. Uh, is, is this Max Games or is this EA Sports? At this point, I'm finding it difficult to know the difference. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, SO7, you're a stupid moron. The devs have to make money. Yeah, I understand that. They they're a business. They got they got a business to make and maintain. They got to get money some way somehow. But these overpriced items are not the way. And on top of that, I feel like if you make your game more fun, it would get more downloads, which would give people a better incentive to spend money on the game, right? Or am am I just talking about on my ass? I probably am. But yeah, that's the chess update. Uh as you can see, very, very well worth it. Uh, maybe the price, maybe the pricing for this stuff is different in your area. It might be cheaper where you live, but I know in my region, it is absolutely not worth the price. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.